So I will start with a very brutal question. When did Mandas, when, when may Lithuania become the state of the green port? Give me the date, please. It's quite complicated to name the date. <laughs> what is commitment and what is hope? It's difficult to say, maybe difficult to say, but just approximately. In any case, we all understand that we aim for as fast a period as possible. Simonas, when? This uh, ship burns two tons of uh, uh, fuel in an hour. So I would say that this would happen when this ship no longer emits smoke via the chimney. Uh, connecting ships to electricity would be one of the largest steps. Okay, if you have a question, raise your hand and uh, there's a microphone uh, which will be brought to you if you have questions. <laughs> what would you see, say, to 2029, the 15th of December, 4 p.m. Have you marked it? Have you noted? Okay. Uh, the, the Vice Minister did this. I would speak not about the uh, green port, but about the green port, city port. We have to expand this concept. Okay, did this. Darius, Darius, sorry. Uh, well, I want to say that uh, the first time is always the, the most memorable one. Today, I have had two new things, the digital C. I thought, what does it mean? Uh, I have heard that uh, the port today speaks so much about the environment and there are so many new ideas and uh, we hope that there will be a concept agreement that will show uh, the, the real path towards the green port and uh, 2030 uh, well, we'll probably need 15 days more than the mayor has said, but I hope that 2030 will be the final date. Okay, uh, colleagues, you may send your likes regarding uh, the proposals. Okay, in a couple of minutes, uh, the, uh, this program will be broadcasted. And uh, I would like to ask you, what would the value be of the green port uh, for, uh, for instance, a daughter who probably had thought that she is not going to have children because we are going to leave the polluted port for her children. So what is the vision? Why should we aspire? What should we aspire for? Well, we have to have the vision in our minds. And I am coming back to the, to the green philosophy, the green idea. And this is not an alternative. There are no alternatives. Maybe we may have alternatives in time. How long will it last? And uh, as our colleague has said, uh, knowing that uh, the Christmas movement starts uh, approximately on the 15th of December. This is why I'm saying, uh, giving you the date. On the other hand, uh, this was not in vain that I emphasized the idea of the green uh, city port. We should 
we may aspire for everything green, but if the surroundings will not be green, we will not ensure sustainable uh, green development. So what is the green city port? It has to be in the green country, in the green state. And uh, we, uh, by the time we eliminate any loading activities that pollute the city, we will not have the green port. That's why this uh, solution has to be composite. Colleagues, help me understand if 2029 is the date when Klaipeda port becomes the green Port. Uh, Kennedy's, who promised uh, the flight to the moon, uh, had the challenges that there were no uh, powerful engines, uh, no solutions to maintain life uh, in space, and uh, no possibilities to navigate. What are the largest uh, um, challenges that we have to overcome? Yeah. Well, I do not want to speak for all, but uh, let's begin with the city. And uh, first of all, let us uh, zero emissions. Yes, uh, there were a lot of uh, possible solutions in terms of uh, reducing the sulfur context about the uh, different types of fuel, but uh, uh, okay, uh, the city is green, the port is green, but what transport will be used to, to transport the cargo in and out of the city, green or not green? Okay, you mentioned the example of Bega and the railways and the locomotives. This is just a chain which must not have any black links. So, in terms of the city, public uh, transport and an integrated logistical uh, chain and uh, circular economy aspects. A question from the audience. Uh, the moderator scared us that we only have eight minutes, but we have more than 20 minutes. Okay. So a question from Remigius Lepinskas. Hello, I uh, represent the Green um, Policy Institute. And uh, my question is about uh, since all the Klaipeda representatives responsible for the green city and the port are here, my question is the following. One of the things I understood from the discussion of these topics that uh, the general plan and the master plan of the city are uh, compiled separately without any coordination between them. So my question is to the minister and the mayor. Has the situation been solved already? Will these two plans will have will be coordinated and will we have a real true green port or will we have separately a port uh, that is trying to become green and the city that is trying to become green? Well, to correct, both of the plans are almost approved. The port has a, uh, the plan. Uh, that's been approved and the city plan will be approved at the latest in September. So these two plans uh, have become a reality already. The previous process was about a lengthy discussion and it would take more than 20 hours uh, to tell you about uh, the processes. Uh, we shouldn't look back. We Uh, we have to uh, aim at uh, the synchronization of these two general plans uh, while being flexible, of course. As you know, the uh, freshwater port vision, uh, the deep water port vision is now moved to the side, uh, to aside a little bit. Um, and I would like to thank the management of the port uh, for their uh, responsible uh, treatment of the city's expectations. Although they could have just uh, said, uh, well, uh, this is not our business, but I'm really happy that while they already have their own constitution, their own general plan did not interfere with the city's plan. 
these two, let's put it this way, constitutions are about uh, generic Lithuanian language, but with certain dialects. Vidmant has also wanted to answer this question. Yes, the mayor answered it extensively. From all the twists and turns, we finally managed to hit the straight road and uh, uh, the Lithuanian railways uh, were involved uh, as well as companies uh, subordinate to the Ministry of the Communications. So uh, we chose the road of discussions rather than that of confrontation. We have managed to find the um, common ground. We see the goal as our common goal, Simonas. In fact, we have to look at Rotterdam, where they have terminals without any operator working there. If we want to earn a lot, and Lithuania is an ambitious country, we have to envisage that in the port of Klaipeda will have a reducing number of jobs and the loyalty will reduce, uh, the, the understanding will be reduced. Therefore, there will be many more uh, controversy towards the port, be it a pig farm, be, be it another industry. Uh, businesses know that in the post-industrial society, people uh, are becoming distanced from industry. This is a challenge for Claypada because people who live on the other side of the fence do not uh, are not aware of what's going on in the port. The number of staff is going down from seven thousand, and the uh, and the shipyards uh, also are reducing the staff, and there will be an increasing conflict because to physically carry in uh, forty-seven tons of cargo into the city will cause uh, will cause uh, a noise city inhabitants will raise issues for that and this is now about how well the port is prepared we see that some companies manage it well and avoid conflicts conflicts with the people but there is one company at the northern part of the uh, of the city uh, that is not managing this very well so be it uh, how, however are the expectations of the country or city or the port. Sometimes it boils down to one specific shareholder who, uh, because of his uh, uh, short-sightedness, uh, programs big conflicts. And my wish is that the city and the port uh, delineate this buffer zone, because uh, I believe that uh, it would be possible to avoid um, designing uh, residential areas uh, around the port uh, it's uh, similar in Vilnius, where around the airport, uh, people want to build residential houses, pre-programming discomfort. So there will be discomfort if you live around a big logistical hub. So the general plan, of course, lays certain foundations, but it is very important to make sure that any uh, that those ambitions plans uh, would uh, walk uh, shoulder to shoulder with the people's welfare. One more question. We have one more question, but before that, uh, I'd like to encourage you to be more active in voting at mente.com by entering the special code. And now Robert Asvalandiais will ask the question. Thank you. I represent the uh, Sivadoring company that have been involved in creating the green port for many years. And I'd like to invite all the participants of the conference and the broader audience that perhaps is joining in to uh, focus on the facts. We have uh, probably uh, many of us read the wonderful book, uh, Factfulness, and uh, uh, there are examples from this conference. They said that eight minutes, but we have 20. The minister said that this, uh, uh, ferry is burning, uh, burning fuel oil while standing here, but no, it, it is burning diesel. Uh, the ref conflict, they said that the conflict, that there were conflicts between the city and the port. No, everybody's discussing together. So quite often facts seem to be uh, more scary than they really are. So let us follow the facts and let us evaluate uh, them adequately and what would be the conclusion of yours of your of your contribution 
uh, the conclusion would be that uh, we have to bear in mind the facts while we raise our objectives and uh, while creating the concept of the green port uh, our suggestion was that we should assess all of the measures of the green port in terms of the competitiveness of the port so let us not forget the greenness and uh, uh, or environment go hand uh, hand in hand with the economy and uh, we have to aim for both thank you very much maybe you uh, would like to say something yes uh, to react to uh, co the colleague's contribution in terms of objectives Today, and yesterday, and probably tomorrow, everybody will be talking about objectives. And uh, we've been talking about the green port today or in 2030 or later. But uh, we practically never talk about how we are going to achieve this objective. And the uh, colleague from the port and the minister talked about certain measures. And this is quite a rare case because the objective is very clear, clear as it is many times it has been repeated today but the biggest challenge is not to create new environmental uh, problems and normally this is quite a frequent case in the environmental area not only in lithuania but europe-wide let us look at the electric transport before uh, it was a big objective to, to, to have an electromobile, but nobody was thinking about how they're going to deal, uh, handle the batteries of, uh, of electromobiles. So while we shape and design the concept of the green port, we must not forget about how to avoid creating new environmental problems or uh, avoid transferring them to the other side of the fence, as Minister said, please. Well, just one thing I'd like to highlight. We have, uh, as Mr. Volunteers said, we have to start with certain factual circumstances. We have to all agree about how we understand the Green Port to avoid uh, the situation of the Istanbul Convention uh, that is the target of a lot of criticism, but they haven't read it. So let us first uh, define what it is and what parameters uh, could be used to define it. Uh, when can we say that, yes, we have the green port, and then we can go back to the uh, measures and to the dates. And Simon has touched upon uh, a very uh, sensitive topic, uh, the possible uh, constructions at the port area. I'd like to provoke a little bit by saying, OK, let's wait a minute. If we're talking about the green port, a green city, everything is green. So what's the matter if the residential house is 10 kilometers from the port or next to the next to the crane it is going to be green anyway so we must not uh, lose sight of the factual circumstances and my wish is that the port community and the city community has a healthy green understanding about what is rational and just and what is uh, what is a, a source of conflicts which are better to avoid just like with migrants well friends Oh, when we started talking about the date of the green port, we started talking about the reason and the, and the rationality. Yes, the mayor of Nering. Hello to everyone. I am always very specific. Uh, uh, there were suggestions to become partners uh, in this digitization project, but I did not understand the final result. I understand the IT part. They are going to create software program. Um, but, uh, well, what I don't understand, I cannot comment on. But I understand that uh, digitization is not going to help uh, move tourists to Neringa, uh, that was said about the batteries, but a specific uh, suggestion. 
in the master plan of the uh, Klaipeda port, is there a, a link with Klaipeda? Uh, the city plan link, we simply have to build an electric train that could uh, bring hundreds of thousands of tourists to Nering and hundreds of thousands of uh, cars would simply be parked in the fields uh, in Klaipeda and all the tourists and locals would use the electric train to ne to come to Nering and then uh, as the minister said we would become a brave country I don't see brave solutions so far where are we brave Okay, let's uh, make a plan by 2029. Let's make a, a Neringa car free. We are loading uh, hundreds of thousands of tourists to Klaipeda and making it a beautiful place and avoiding hundreds of uh, tons of diesel. So uh, then uh, the Koronian spit will uh, accommodate uh, all the people of the world. And now, now, now uh, the, this beautiful UNESCO heritage site, UNESCO site uh, uh, has a problem of uh, cars. Then nobody will need to, to repair the road. Okay, let's take a hundred millions from the digitization project and use it for that. Well, who would like to react to that? Uh, dear Mayor, I will not start with the grandiose, but rather feasible plans. Let us first repair the bicycle road. That would cost uh, our state four million. As we know, there is no owner and people are uh, knocking their teeth out on this bicycle path. Visions are good, but uh, I don't think uh, that uh, the Coronian spit, which by the way had, uh, had um, a rail, during the road, during the war, but I believe that the Koronian spit should have a different vision. The isolation, melancholy, quality, uh, rather than quick and mass tourism. And you, Mayor, uh, also are suffering from the tourists from the cruise ships who don't spend anything but just to take a look around. As to the Smiltina uh, uh, ferry, it uh, burns uh, hundreds of thousands of liters of diesel. Uh, we have been discussing the possibility to replace those ferries with a hybrid or electric ferries. That would cost another four, uh, four million euros. So far, it's too expensive. Plus, the um, shore infrastructure is uh, at the moment too expensive. But let us hope that technologies in several years' time are going to be better. Thank you very much. Uh, let us uh, show on, on the screen the results of the voting. Let's see how people have uh, reacted to your statements. And to sum up our discussions, what, which one of the statements as to when we are going to have the green port is uh, the most likely one? And uh, it seems that is the as quickly as possible. Uh, colleagues, we have three minutes left according to this uh, clock. And uh, please, each of you, say a sentence about what should be done to make it as fast as possible, to make it happen as fast as possible. Well, I think we have to change our thinking, our mindset. Well, it takes time. Vidmantas. There is no separate green port. There is an entirety. We are talking about uh, the offshore wind energy in the sea, uh, solar energy in the Klaipeda port. This is a complex decision, but this is a macro decision, whereas the Klaipeda port is uh, one of the parts of the macro uh, solution. As Darius said, uh, we have to change our mindset. And uh, I like the saying, which goes, 
which is rather cruel, but in principle it is uh, correct. Uh, change or disappear. So you have to change or else you will disappear. We will have more space for discussion during the discussions about the change of the mindset, Simonas. Several specific things. We would become greener if road transport is moved to rail. Uh, Klippa port is already a success story, a, an example to Riga and other ports. We have to uh, put the surface waters of the Klippa port in order because there are huge volumes of wastewater that all goes into our sea. We have to uh, connect uh, these ships to uh, shore infrastructure, both water and electricity. And uh, by doing so, we would become an example because uh, such a port inside the city, it has to, to be like this. And the last point uh, that uh, Loose cargo has to be handled in a closed, closed way because today it is still being loaded openly, and this is not compatible with the green and responsible port. And uh, in one sentence, uh, well, a lot of things have been said, a lot of suggestions of what to do, but uh, I, I, I would like to say that we also have to decide what not to do. As Simona said, we have to eliminate the black pollution points that uh, are not compatible with the green philosophy. And uh, on the other hand, as Simona said, some uh, the majority of cargo has to be moved onto the environmentally friendly transport forms. The same goes for the city. All transport has to become zero emissions and then private transport will also achieve zero emissions and the Glypada bicycle roads are quite good. Well, uh, briefly about the mindset. When I came here, I met my colleague Aiste, who is probably the strongest expert in uh, uh, marine environmental issues. And we uh, said that uh, after today, we're all becoming green and full of ideas, but we'll come back to work and everything will be the same will be overwhelmed with our daily worries and these uh, good ideas will be pushed aside. So this is our task, namely how in a year's time we could meet again together and see if we've become greener or not. There are a lot of conferences where we should look into one another's eyes and uh, start speaking, not about changing our mindset, but more specifically about uh, changed uh, thinking. Thank you very much for the discussion, participants.